conference. And at that time, uh, Bob and his team were getting serious about moving to Ditto. They had uh, some issues that were uh, causing them pain, and Bob knew from, I think, a few years of investigation that Ditto was likely the way to go. And now it was time to get management to buy in and write the check and do it. So um, it, it's, it's been three years. And what was achieved uh, in a very short period of time, I think, is, is a model that a lot of organizations uh, can benefit from. Uh, Bob and his team, you're looking at probably half the team right here, two thirds of the team. Um, you know, they had day jobs. They had to get their content out, the product documentation out. And they also had to implement uh, a new information architecture, a new way of, of writing and authoring content, a new way of uh, producing content, and not just the print content they had been producing, but moving on to other types of content, HTML and help files and embedded uh, content in some of the, uh, some of the technology that they, uh, they build and deliver. Um, so uh, my name is Brian Trumbett. I'm with uh, Data Conversion Laboratory. And I've been dealing with content management uh, since before it was called content management. I've been dealing with, with publishing technology for about 35 years. And uh, uh, SQML and XML as they came to the forefront of, uh, of content formats. Um, with me is, is Judy Weinzel, who uh, works out of the uh, Minnesota offices of, uh, of Cybex and uh, she's responsible for the technical writing team. Uh, Bob works out of the Medway, Massachusetts office, and he's responsible for uh, information architecture. Uh, uh, he's also part of the writing team, but he's become very technical in his old age, uh, and uh, he, was, he was the driving force be behind this project. Um, just a little bit about DCL for those of you that might not be aware. Um, our name is, is pretty synonymous with what we do, data conversion, but we also do other things, including in the case of working with Cybex, uh, some upfront consulting in terms of strategy, helping them plan and select tools, helping them establish a budget, and uh, an implementation plan. And we did that uh, uh, shortly after the Providence Conference, and it gave Bob and Judy the, uh, the tools they needed to sell management on the uh, the implementation and the investment needed uh, to make that implementation. So while we do primarily data conversion in a lot of different um, industries, uh, we also do consulting and strategy and uh, in some instances help clients implement uh, content management, uh, specifically data content management uh, uh, platforms. Um, just over the last five or six years, in addition to all the other uh, XML conversion work we do. We've worked with a number of companies on specifically DITA types of projects in varying uh, degrees and capacities, but uh, all of them uh, typically include some level of conversion. It may also include some uh, content analysis for reuse, and in some cases, helping them with tool and technology selection and implementation. So. I'm going to turn it over to Bob now. Bob and Judy are going to tag team back and forth, and at the end we'll have time for, uh, for Q&A. And uh, we hope you enjoy Bob and Judy's presentation. It's pretty interesting. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'm, I talk really long, sorry. I'm Judy Weinzel, like Brian had mentioned. And we are with the company Cybex. We build um, weightlifting equipment. I work out of the Minnesota division, we build strength equipment. Bob works out of the Medway division and he builds, they build all the cardio equipment. And just in the last three months, we were acquired by Life Fitness, who is another major manufacturer of um, equipment. Right now we have 160 pieces of uh, cardio and strength equipment that Cybex builds strictly in the United States. We have, like I said, two manufacturing facilities. And during our, our uh, session today, we're going to highlight the trials and tribulations of what it took for our small technical running department to get us out of the bog, the bog down, you know, bottleneck to the rock stars that we ended up being, you know, just being a really small department. And now Bob's going to go over the pre preview of what we're going to see in this presentation. All right, thanks, Judy. Um, what we're going to go through on this presentation is the uh, return on investment 
that's really important, especially with tech pubs, because tech pubs does not, it's not a department that generates revenue, so that's difficult. Um, one of the big benefits from data that we saw, too, was the efficiency and consistency that we gained. Uh, we'll also go over the timeline and give you some realistic expectations of how long it actually takes to, to implement this project. Um, we'll also share what we learned about content and how our focus shifted from the, the PDF printed page to working with content and doing topic-based authoring. And uh, our, we divided up this presentation into four sections, kind of as we travel through um, our life before DITA, what we did there. Uh, the research and education, which <coughs> Brian mentioned, we, we came to the uh, conference here. Uh, what we learned while implementing DITA, and what now, what our life is like now that we have DITA in place. Okay, so as you can see, fitness equipment has changed a lot over the years. Uh, from some old archaic type stuff that um, kind of medieval or with you know limited adjustments, no feedback, things like that. And where now our equipment has really gone into you know, the digital age and um, offering a lot of different things with feedback of what your watts are and um, a lot of different information there. We also have apps that can help you work out even on strength equipment where you think electronics more than cardio. With strength, we have apps that help walk you through a workout step by step. Uh, we have a lot of entertainment with TVs. We have radios, everything embedded into the product to, to entertain you while you're, you're working on the machine. And we also have asset management, where that's where we have um, transmitters and equipment. So every night, they phone home to our headquarters and give us, tell us what the mileage is on the machine, if there's any error codes, things like that. Um, and that's pretty cool because we can actually tell if a fan is you know, clogged on the treadmill and it's gonna start overheating and causing errors, we can tell the club owner to go you know, vacuum out the machine and to, to prevent any downtime for the club or the end user. So uh, it's pretty cool with the feedback that we're getting there. When we look back at what our department was like, like five years ago, and what it did it has done for us now, it's it's, just, it's amazing. Because before data, I mean, five, six, ten years ago, we were starting out, we were using Quark. And then we went to InDesign. And even though InDesign I mean, it was a great tool for us, and we did a lot of things with it, it just, we needed more. We were doing, you know, started adding more languages, more products constantly, and we just, yeah, you know, we couldn't keep up. And, we, you know, we thought our content was really efficient and, you know, consistent. And we, once we got into data, we started backtracking and finding all these things that we knew were consistent and they just it just made didn't make it look good. And then we got into the cost of the translations and we had four dollars a page that we were paying just to have things formatted. So we knew we need to find it a better way to manage our content, make it smaller, so we had less stuff to to translate. <clears throat> Still using InDesign, we ended up going to generic chapters, which were great, but then we had the problem <clears throat> that we didn't have our headings on the top of our pages anymore. So the the manuals weren't machine specific. We cut down a lot on our translation costs because we just had everything in book format, but it still just wasn't what we needed. So now we're going to go back to Bob, and we're going to talk about all the research and, and education we did to get into the data program. <clears throat> okay, so what we did, um, you know, there was a lot of research before we got to data. Um, we were searching around, we knew we had a problem, we had to find a solution. Um, and back in 2007, going way back, there was, um, Ann Rockley produced this, uh, was a slideshow and presentation about content management 101, structured content management. So this wasn't even really data, but it was talking about sort of the pre data days. Um, it was just written very well, and very easy to read. And once we read this, we said, ah, okay, there is a solution, there's something we can do, um, something that makes sense. So. Uh, that was a big thing. We felt we like finally we felt oh, okay. We're not alone because we're always you know we were working in our own department. We weren't you know in communication with a lot of other fitness companies or people using data things like that. Um, so it was good to know, that, you know there might be a solution, something else to look into. So because um, ultimately you know like everybody wants you want a magic box where you can just throw your junk in, push a button, and everything comes out the other end and it works. It's but it's never that easy. So. That's the thing we're looking for. Um, yeah. 
So back in uh, 2013, like I said, we came to the, the conference. It was down in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, we got there and we had no idea what data was, how you install it, where do you buy it. We just had no clue what was going on. Um, you know, we we're very excited about, you know, finding a solution and changing, you know, things. So we kept talking to uh, management and uh, people saying, we've got to go to the show. we got to, you know, see what this is about, what's going on. Um, and that's where we went down there. We met, you know, Brian at DCL, started talking to us about, you know, different solutions, things we could do. Uh, we found Oxygen XML that would seem pretty popular. So we're like, okay, we can start off with Oxygen, but we need a content management system. So we're trying to figure out how do we manage all this stuff. And, um, <coughs> so we talked to a lot of different vendors. Uh, people kept asking us, well, how many topics do you have? And this and that, and that was a big thing. We're like, topics, it's like, I don't know, we started figuring out, it's like, we had zero. We had no topics because we weren't writing data. We weren't doing any structured authoring. Everything was like Judy said, in a design on a page format. We just had no grasp of what our, our content was. Uh, but, but we did have, we had over 5,000 pages of InDesign files and 10,000 images. So we had a lot of content. Uh, we started talking to people, we were telling about all this content we had. And, and they were saying, well, that was, you know, small to medium sized content or tech pubs apart. And we're, I was like, small, what do you mean? This is like huge problems. I'm worried about this every day. We got all these, you know, it just seemed out of control for me. But looking at the big thing, talking to other people that have 100,000 pages, and a lot of content, it's, it's, uh, it seemed small, you know, to everybody else, but it was, it was a big problem for us. So that's what we had to do. We had to figure out, okay, how are we going to manage all these, these uh, files and pages? So what we did was um, we needed to come up with a plan, and you know, any good plan, you need to have a project name for it. So that's where we came up with this Cybex XML project, kind of on playing on our name of Cybex and XML. So. Um, because when we came back from the show, Judy and I were all excited. We're running around XML, data, Congress, and nobody had a clue what we were talking about. We thought we were crazy people. We're just, you know, we were so excited, but it's like nobody knew what it was. So, um, so we came up with this project overview, just a simple document, um, going through what what the project is, what um, why we're doing it, why we're doing, you know, we want to change. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, what did it is? What XML is? We talked about oxygen, talked about x docs from Bluestream, uh, and then we got into details of roles and responsibilities, what everybody was going to be doing, and then also a timeline. And this was a good tool because this was great because we started sending this out to everybody, especially you know board of directors or managers or all the other departments for service and marketing, to just let them know, okay, this is what we're doing, this is the plan. And they could read more about it, but they knew we were serious and kind of explained some things, but. People still today, they're like, what's that? I don't know what that is. Uh, so we got that done. And through the timeline, we um, we started the proposal, like I said, right after in April 2013 at the show. And we went right back, uh, started trying to get management involved and get, you know, get a PO done and all that stuff. And it actually took um, 11 months to do. And Judy's going to explain that more and further, you know, a little more of detail of that. Uh, the design and planning. That took a few months to do the project kickoff, defining the outputs and architecture. Um, and then we went into the baseline implementation. And that's where we created the, the content management system, you know, with the help of DCL, get that going, define what our output style sheets were. And, um, and then we went into this deployment phase from July through September. And that's where we really, you know, um, flipped the switch, turned it on, and, and started uh, working with the, with the tools. Okay, Judy. Thanks. We're getting ready to present the board. We had everything we needed. We had all the documentation that we had. And it, we got lucky because the, the board of directors just happened to be coming in two months after we'd already been to this conference. So we had complete knowledge of what was going on. We were all excited. And I was nervous because you know we were looking at asking them just a lot of money, he kind of jumped into blind faith because they had no idea what we were talking about. Um, all of our documents, they knew that we struggled with our documentations, all our manuals. Um, you know, we just had PDFs. They wanted everything more user friendly on the web and all that. So we explained to them that our documentation manuals, we had more flexibility. We had PDFs, we had HTMLs, and the board was getting pretty excited about this. And then we started talking about translations because 
you know, translations come up all the time, and all of a sudden you have an emergency, you gotta have something done. And last year, this actually happened. I was sitting up on the Canadian border fishing, and I got a call saying, hey, we have to have Arabic. Well, before it would take us months to get a language going through, get approved and everything. After a few phone calls, we already had our translation vendor all set up. We were already with Dita. It only took three weeks, and we were already up in line with Arabic. Our product was sitting on the Canadian border, it needed to be shipped, and boom, it was done. And so the board, I mean, they're really, they're really excited, and we've, we've shown them that what we can do, and we'll just keep moving on from there. Uh, yeah, so with this, you know, we package everything we have. We just grabbed it all, we, we packaged it up in a file, we just threw it over at Brian and said, all right, we'll take care of this, you know, we need these converted and fixed. So, um, and they actually were able to get it in a few months. They were able to convert our files, get them back to us. And um, like I said, our system was, was, was up and running, but we had a little bit of content. But once we got that content back in September, that's when we really started playing around with things. And, um, and that's what it made it real, real because, you know, a lot of times you did do MOs and, you know, you're looking at the thing on how to change the oil in your car and all that. And it doesn't make sense, but we, we're, you're actually dealing with our live data. That's where, okay, I know what this is and what that is. And it made a lot more sense. Um, so we, we spent that time cleaning up the files, getting anything up in the system. Um, and one of the things looking back is like, you know, we could have, uh, to make things a little bit better, maybe we could have cleaned up and, and thrown less junk at Brian, you know, and just, you know, you know, trying to figure out, okay, you know, we just need this, we need to clean up and try to consolidate our, our content, but we didn't know. We were still trying to learn this data thing and figure everything out. So um, that's one of the things that, that might help both of us. Um, and the biggest thing for us was like, when we started looking at this, this content and data, it was a real eye, eye opener because we had always been focused on page layout and I got to fit it onto the page, it's got to look good and all that. We weren't even looking at the content, but now we're actually looking at the content and we were finding problems and issues and saying, well, why did we write this? We're actually looking to see what the content was in the manual. So that helped us a lot to focus on that and produce a better manual and better, better content for the customer. And um, the other thing, yeah, we were trying to still learn our tools, things like that, and um, just trying to figure out how best to structure a task or a concept. We have a really small team. We have four writers and we have one illustrator. And we needed the whole team to be on board with the project where we knew that there's no way it would ever work. Um, all of us were desktop publishers and we had to get out of the mindset like Bob was talking about of going from topic-based writing to, or go from desktop publishing into topic-based writing. So Bob and I spent a couple weeks, we'd already purchased the oxygen software that we use and the x -Oxygen. We just kind of you know played around with it for a while. And then we got some one-on-one -on -one training and after we got pretty comfortable what we were working with with the tools, we hadn't really done any live content yet. Uh, Bob came to Minnesota because we have the biggest team is in Minnesota. So we had Bob come in and we spent a week with our consultant working on all the ins and outs. And the next few months after that, we just kind of had everybody working on it. We brought our live content in, we practiced with it. Uh, Bob became our data expert. And all during this time, we still had you know, a lot of products that we had to get done for our, you know, our real jobs. But we were able to, we were able to do it. It was a total team effort, and uh, it just it went way better than we ever thought it would. Because you have everybody on board, every you know agrees what you're doing. It went really smooth. There you go. All right. Um, one of the things too is is anybody right taking notes with pen and paper? So. Okay, one person, okay. All right, um, if you want, just, um, you can just write down this, uh, routine is comfortable and change is stressful. Okay, so now take your pen, put it in your other hand, and go down and write the same thing. Oh yeah, all right, yeah. All right. So that's just my point. So that was a little thing, exercise we did with the group, but um, when you change things, it's, it's stressful, it's hard, it's, you know, if you were to write that with your other hand, you're not used to that. It's going to look like a mess. It's going to take a lot longer. You're going to be frustrated. Um, so it's, it's one of those things. Change is stressful. So that's what you have to do when you're making dinner. You're making a big leap and a change. So like the goldfish here, you're in your comfort zone, your own world, but you have to jump out of that. You have to go somewhere else. And, and it's, it's, 
it's um, difficult to, you know, there was another presentation I was at, they were showing a mountain climber going up and there was this huge gap and it was like, just, it was just scary looking at it, like jumping this, you were gonna fall into the abyss, you know, so uh, you do have to make that leap of faith and uh, get into debt because it really, really pays off quite a bit, so. Um, so with this, once we started going, um, we actually had a big roadblock because we started creating these data and XML files and stuff, and we started talking to our, our translation vendor, saying, can you do this? And we kind of talked to them a few months before, saying, can you handle data files? Oh yeah, we know data, we know XML. We sent them all the files, and <coughs> waited a week, heard nothing, going back and forth, and um, it, it was just a big communication thing and a problem. We, we got down to finally figuring out they couldn't handle the data files. So. Uh, all of a sudden, right in the middle of this, we had to then change translation vendors. So that was a big deal. So, so we had to go out and you know we searched for you know we went to got five different quotes just to really try to figure who who was doing it. So, um, and then we knew we were talking to certain vendors that they knew exactly what data was and they could handle the file. So, so that was a big issue. So, um, the other issue we had was we had an increase in our translation costs because, like I said, once we got everything back from DCL, it was all converted. That's when we started looking at the content, saying, "What is this? Is a mess? What is this?" And so we started rewriting a lot of our content. So, uh, you know, with translation vendors, like we had a translation memory. That, you know, when you send all your stuff out, they send it back and forth. as this translation memory they use as um, sort of a repository to, to do all this. But when we made any changes, you change one word in a sentence or change the whole thing completely, you're paying for additional translation costs. So. Um, so we were making all these changes and plus adding a lot of content. So our translation costs went up a bit. Um, and that was difficult because we kept telling everybody, the board of directors, hey, we're gonna save money, we're gonna do this. And all of a sudden we're spending more money, you know, here and there. So, uh, so that, was, that was a learning point for us. Uh, and kind of like what we talked about too, the timeline on this project was 11 months of uh, when we went from the proposal, getting that proposal done so we actually got a PO and um, with that, there was a, so that was 11 months there, but that wasn't until we actually started doing anything with that. Once we started, um, it was one year to train, design, and implement the whole system. So it was really that from January where we got it going all the way up into September, and then through December was when we, we got it. So just under 12 months, we were able to get the system up and running and going and getting output to our style sheets and, and that. So that was, that was a great accomplishment. Um, and then with that, the next six months, uh, we took to finish and clean things up. We also had a, then a request to add Chinese as a language. So it's like, okay, let's add another language. But we wanted to test the system. So that was a great point for us where we took all the output and everything was pretty clean at that point. We sent it out, added Chinese as a language. And, and um, that was one of those things too. You're always sweating it. It's like, oh, I told me this was going to work. We invested all this money. And it's like, all right, this better work. It's like, and, and it did. So that was, uh, that was a great feeling. So. Um, you know, a lot of people we talked to too would say this project, you know, takes two to three years to implement data, and, and sometimes it does. Um, it depends really on how much content you have or what's involved with the system, and uh, we really tried to get it done. You know, for me, it's like I wanted to get it done in six months. I'm always the optimist and thinking I can get stuff done. You know, it's like, um, you know, the wife's like, oh, you got to get the house painted. I'm like, oh, sure, I can bang that up a weekend. No problem, right? But three weeks later, I got the front of the house done and I'm working on the side. It's like, all right, it ends up taking a month, you know? So, um, so I tend to do that underestimate things sometimes, but um, it was a good accomplishment. Like Judy talked with the whole team, we just need everybody's effort and it was good. Um, other people have talked about it in some of the seminars today too, that you need everybody on board. Your team has to be, you know, 100%. So we actually worked on a lot of that before we even started with data was working on team building stuff and meetings and, and getting them going. All right, so now, you know, our life with data with XDOC. So this is the part, and you know, everybody's probably seen The Wizard of Oz, but this is the moment where it goes from black and white to color, and everything's, you know, magic and nice and great, and, and, it, and that's really what happened. Um, because we, we had the system up and running, and um, we could see what our content was. We were storing things, you know, topics and maps. We had our images in there. Uh, things were working great. And um, we also, with the localization package, that saved us a lot of time and saved us a lot of effort. Judy's gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, but we also had revision control too, so we knew when we were changing documents, where a lot of times 
you look in a folder or a file, you just have the last date it was saved, but you don't know how many, how many times that was changed. You'd have to have that knowledge of what was going on. Um, we also have a check-in and check-out system, so that helps eliminate two people working on the same file at once. If someone checks it out, you can't touch it until they check it back in. Uh, the search function is very is great in the system too because we can then, a lot of times you're thinking like, oh, I know I wrote something about heart rate. And you get, what you do is just go and type heart rate and you get all the topics that have heart rate in there. So we can look at those and say, oh, here's, and the thing before, like I said, we, didn't, we had no idea because everything's scattered in all these, these separate files. Now we can say, oh, there's three topics in heart rate. And we can tell, oh, one's for a tread, one's for a bike, one's for an arc, or however it's you know, laid out. So that helps a lot. Um, and also if you need to make changes, we know, oh, we need to update this topic. You can see exactly what, what you're looking for in search. Uh, the other big benefits too, we were just in a PDF world. That's all we had for output. Now we're producing the HTML, and that's a big, big change for us. Uh, it's, it's used a lot with the service department. We're doing a lot of things there, so the HTML output is, is a big change. Uh, especially with, we've done some with PDFs, with uh, hyperlinks, and you know, with uh, email links, that type of stuff. But now with HTML, we can link between topics and refer to those and, and do quite a bit of stuff there. And the other thing too is that we, um, you know, we talked a little bit about, you know, we got bought by Life Fitness, and they have a totally different style and output for their manual. And we did a good demonstration with them a few weeks ago where we took the Cybex content and Life content, we actually published in our format and our output, and then theirs, and then we switched them up. We took Cybex content and published at Life. So, so they could see the difference, and we're like, and that's, it, it kind of opens people's eyes and say, oh, yeah, it's like, when you just look at the topics and, Dealing with that, the output is totally different, and that's a real, real tough thing for at least the, the writers and authors to understand and, and separate that you're just working on the content there. Once we got this all in place, we all decided that we all became writers again. Before, we pretty much just copy pasted, you know, just we never looked at our content. Now we have complete control and time to focus on our content and our consistency. Um, earlier in the presentation, Bob talked about the roles and responsibilities. We all have to be able to multitask, be able to keep up with roles on our plate, and if someone's gone, you know, we have that person had to step up and do it. Bob and I decided that it'd be less complicated if you know we just kind of like separate up some of the responsibilities, but yet we still could step in if, if need be. So Bob took on the majority of the technical side and took on the local and I took on the localization part. So I was responsible for making sure that all the POs and managing all the translations. And that were great. Um, before dinner, when we had a new product line, I said it was just a daunting task. It took us forever. And now with dinner, we're going from eight weeks down to two weeks. With our localization, we could spend two weeks just getting everything prepared, packaged up with our InDesign files. Now it's just less than a couple of hours. <coughs> Adding languages, like I said before, you know, it took us three to four months. Now it's just it's easy. Once we get everything back from the, the translator, we feed it in, everything's all set. All we have to do is change the cover on the metadata. I can't see that far. Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay. And uh, uh, since 2004, we've added three languages, 58 new products, and, and now we're going to add uh, we're going to be adding more language. And now with the, the addition of Life Fitness, they have a lot more products than we do, and they've got more languages. So we're going to figure out how do we manage getting all those languages put in. Um, before dinner, we were, we were so far behind, it was exhausting. We used to, you know, we work 60 hours a week, get paid for 40. Now we actually get to work 40 hours a week and get paid for 40. So it, it's, it, it's just a thing of the past. We're just, things have mellowed out for us. We have a lot less stress. Bob and I, you know, we were, you know, we were concerned because we had a, our, our jobs are on the line when we took on this project. And uh, we worked really hard and we proved it to everybody. and. We're, we're totally enthusiastic about it. We know it's a good program and it's working great for us. Okay, like I said before, tech pubs does not generate revenue. Mm -hmm. That's bad. So, um, so like I said, we're not making money for the company, but what you can do is try to spend less or try to save money. and. Um, like we said before, you know, we used to pay four dollars a page to get desktop publishing done. That was very expensive, um, and that saved us about fifteen thousand dollars a year just cutting that out of the budget. Um, our labor time spent on focus on creating this quality content, 
and um, you know our headcount. You know we used to have um, six people. We're down about three and a half right now, and um, part of that is that we've um, been able to. You know some people have left, but you know before this, when we were just working with InDesign, we were trying to hire one or two more positions and bodies, and just because we couldn't keep up. But once we switched to Dita, um, you know we, we lost like one person, and we just weren't able to replace them and stuff. But but now we're so efficient, we're like, we can run this ourselves. And there's one person retiring, and uh, we're not going to have to fill that position. So that's where we're going to be down to that three and a half people. So uh, we've added new products, and we've actually added three languages uh, total since then. So we've added Arabic, Chinese, and Portuguese. And um, so we invested a lot in the system, but it's going to pay off in the coming years um, because we're just you know that much more efficient. You can see some of the numbers there. But, um, already this year, you know, we've been averaging about thirty-five thousand dollars a year on trans translations, and we're only we've only spent six thousand dollars this year, so we saved quite a bit of money there. Um, and what the the total numbers for the cost, you know, the planning and uh, the assessment that was done with DCL that was about eighty-four hundred dollars, and then our implementation uh, that took us about four months to get the system loaded, get the training. Get stuff up and running, and that was one hundred six thousand dollars. The the software for the oxygen and Xbox uh, content management system was about forty six thousand dollars, and then our hours we had to keep track of that for our capital budget, where we spent um, we put down about one hundred eighty hours between Judy and I of, of doing this, and that was for our capital expense. But you know, like Brian says, you know, we had day jobs and all this other stuff, but we invested a lot of time, a lot of late nights or weekends or things work on us to get this implemented um, and just the time internally trying to clean things up or, or really look at our system and how we were creating content what we were doing there okay so um, stuff we're doing now like we talked about we're doing um, HTML we're doing a lot of stuff with the service department they're using Salesforce and articles and in these articles we can link directly to our topics so that's helping quite a bit. It's a lot easier to update that, all this live content with HTML, where with manuals we have to go through a whole ECO, ECM process to do that. Uh, we've also in, uh, reached out and started work with other departments. With our software engineering department, they were using GitHub, trying to document all their projects and the software spec. And now they were kind of interested in data. We, uh, we talked to them, we worked on some projects, and it was great. They created all these topics and maps, built the whole system offline, we got them plugged into X docs. They imported the, the documents, and this was another moment I was sweating. It was like, oh, is this going to work? I imported it, and everything worked, and, and I was able to publish an output, and I was like, something must be wrong. It was like, the, I was expecting an error, expecting some problem, and there wasn't, it worked. And then that's when they reached out to DCL2, and they did, got some additional training. Um, so, so that's worked out really well. And um, working with marketing, you know, they're still in InDesign for the output for brochures and some of the web-based stuff. So we're working on different things like that. Uh, but in the future, yeah, we're just going to learn, keep learning more about data at this conference and HTML, that type of stuff, and then get into some, ditty, some uh, video type of stuff. Um, so we learned, you know, just data is awesome. It's just great, you know. You know I'm, I'm from Boston, so up there we say, uh, data is wicked awesome, you know. So, so anybody can do it. It's, uh, you know, it takes time, but it's worth it. So. Um, and like I said, you know, you need the whole team working together. So there's a lot of preliminary stuff you can do to, to get the team on board and get them because you're gonna, you, you know, there's gonna be a lot of fighting and pushback from the, some some people there. So um, you need the training and guidance, you know, from from DCL or from other people or from the shows. You know, you just you can't do it alone, especially if it's all new to you. You, uh, like I said, we didn't know what what was going on there. Um, things we would have done different. Like I said, we would have tried to clean up our content sooner. And if, um, to do that, to have a cleaner conversion, but we didn't know. We didn't know what the content was going to look like at the end. We didn't know about topic-based authoring too much, and, uh, so that would have uh, helped. And then also started learning data sooner. So uh, the sooner you can do that, it helps you to, to get things going. Okay, that's it. Do we have any questions? How did you? You said when you converted it to data, then you noticed all these inconsistencies. Right. How, how did yeah. you manage that whole process of, of making sure things were consistent? Yeah, well that, because um, once we had the topics in the system, 
then we started, what you did was started, um, we had maps for each chapter, but then we started looking across our you know, cardio or strength lines and seeing, okay, these are common. Uh, we have things like a maintenance chapter, for example, talking about how to maintain the equipment and do that. And because we, we just threw everything into the system and got to convert it, we started looking at it and saying, okay, well, these, these topics are similar. These are the same thing that should be there. But we found, going through all this manual, that we had differences between these topics. So we had something, you know, talking about how to, you know, clean the fan or clean, you know, the dry belt. And, you know, we looked at it, but then it's like, well, we've got five different versions. We need to pick one. So that's what you do. You kind of consolidate everything and, and look at that topic and say, what is this really supposed to say and mean? And then you just decide on that one topic and you build those into the maps, and then you start looking at it. And that's what we did. We, we created these maps and structures with the topics that we knew were clean, that were right, and then the rest we kind of, okay, we can throw this stuff away, and we already have that, and then you can move on to the next thing. And uh, that worked out great. We just did chapter by chapter. And, uh, that's so, that so, so, so the conversion that did it, it allowed you to, to, to see the common content. Yeah, yeah, because that's key. Like I said, we had you know things on heart rate. If you look up heart rate in the system, there's only two or three topics now that discuss it, and so you can see, and you can actually see where it's used. It will tell you it's used in this topic or that one, and, and, and sometimes we have differences. Like I said, between products, there might be a specific reason to have something between a bike and a treadmill to be different, um, and that's where it's all set up. Even with our graphics, we still had, you know, we went from how many graphics we start with down to, you know, 3,000, we're down to 3,000. 3,000 graphics, and so we only have to update the graphic you know, once instead of going trying to find out where all these graphics are, everything's linked now and when we move folders, we don't have to worry about relinking our graphics. Yeah. Uh, I was kind of curious about your transition. I, I couldn't tell if you just jumped in head first and converted everything and switched over immediately or if you kind of kept some legacy and I'm just curious about your transition. Yeah, um, like I said, everything was thrown into the conversion, so we did that, but it was still uh, like a lot of people talked about doing, if you work in a small project, that's great and all that, but we wanted to do everything, we wanted to get done right away. So we threw everything in there, but what we did was we had to simultaneously still work in our InDesign world and produce, because that's like, we knew we could publish a PDF because they're sitting on the loading dock saying, we need this manual box. And so, so we still were in the InDesign world for a little bit during that transition period. And then um, with, once we could prove it with data and output, we were like, okay, we had to, you know, do it section by section and say, okay, these manuals are good and clean, I'll put that. And so that's where we started doing that conversion, transferring over. Because um, that's a big thing. You've got you to gotta take the time to make sure it works, test it, print it, and all that. You don't want to put your pressure that, you know, meeting deadlines or shipments that you don't want to get there. And all of a sudden, you think everything's going to work. It's, you could just take one little small snag and you know, mess everything up at the end. We were in the process of actually adding a brand new product line to the straight side which was 21 products, and that's what we brought, one of the first things that we brought in, because we, you know, we, we had the information, and we just had to get it all structured, and we were ready before the engineers were to give us the graphics that we needed. You mentioned <coughs> if you had to do over again, you might have learned uh, earlier uh, more about DITA sooner. Uh, in addition to the, the presentation that you held up, that you guys saw early on, what, what were some other resources that you guys found particularly useful as you climbed that ramp, or maybe to ed, maybe in particular to educate others and help bring them up to school? Yeah, a lot of the stuff we did, we were searching online, just trying to find you know different. You know, there was a lot of slide share things out there, or just different things you could find for information. Uh, Oxygen's got a lot of, of good videos on their website, so you can learn about that, and you can download trial versions. And, and work with that, but like I said, it wasn't until we got the assistance from DCL or reaching out to other people that we, you know, you need professional help. You know, it wasn't something we could just do. And, you know, I try to learn things on my own and try to figure them out, and, you know, with web stuff or that type of stuff. But uh, you know, if if it's new to you and you know you need the help, yeah, try to you know get some assistance from a consultant or something they can look at it. And uh, the big thing they did, you know, DCL that came and looked at our content and said. And, you know, and they knew, they're like, we're chunking things up, we're looking and saying, okay, this is good for you, we're used, we can do this and that. It really helped quite a bit. And so did they, did they work with your whole team at once, or did you, have, did you have any modes where you had to then, when you guys came up to speed, then you had to educate other folks on data? Did you have any resources in that sense, or did, did DCL pretty much work with all of you guys together? Yeah, it was really Judy and I initially, you know, talking with them and, and trying to figure out the system and do all that, and then we slowly started bringing other people on board, so. Because there was a lot to figure out and plan with how the structure and the output was going to be. 
I think Bob and Judy did most of the end user training for their staff after we had worked with them for a number of months, but I think there was a, uh, two or three days when we had Glenn come out to Minneapolis to su support you and, and be there to, to deal with any difficult questions sure. that maybe you weren't ready to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we had a lot of you know, different <coughs> training you know, in different areas and a lot of live you know, one-on-one -on -one support where they came in house and, and helped us. So. And so now moving forward with Life Fitness, adding them on, Bob and I'll be the consultants. Right. We won't have to hire anybody on the outside. And we've already taken a lot of their, a lot of their documents that they had in InDesign and already put it into, into, into Oxygen, into Xdocs to show them this is what it, what, and, you know, I mean, it was, it was quick. And they're, you know, they're pretty amazing. We just haven't got all of the process with them yet. We're, we're, we're working on it. Other questions? I think we've got one minute left. Maybe negative two. We'll, 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 we'll keep going as long until you throw us out. But, you know. All right, one more. You had made a comment that after you migrated to Ditta, you feel a little more like writers again. So can you say anything more about how you guys operate now uh, differently, specifically related to, to content creation versus the way you used to operate? Well, before it was just, you know, we didn't really look at the content because a lot of the content was already created when Bob and I came on board. And so it was, you know, we would tweak things here and there. Now we can actually sit and read a manual and look and go, well, that doesn't make any sense. You know, and nobody's ever caught it out in the field. Yeah. And we've discussed this with Life Fitness. And I said, you guys ever read a manual? And with all their, you know, their writers, no. Nope. They've never looked at one of their manuals. They just go with whatever people give them. And now we've actually found some mistakes in their manuals going, uh, you know, this isn't right content. So, and that's what we found. We found duplicate uh, um, paragraphs in, in some of our manuals that have been there for years. And uh, we've got a lot of, and that's how we reduce our translation costs too, is by, by getting rid of all this duplicate content that we had in there that we didn't know that we had. And, or you had one, you know, one sentence would be different, and so it changed the whole paragraph. And uh, it's made a huge, you know, I, said, I feel like a writer again. You know, I, you know, it's not just copy paste and, and sit there and make PDFs all day long. And uh, I said, we get paid too much to just sit and copy paste. Yep. You know, we're writers. That's what we were hired to do. Well, like I said, it consolidates everything down. So you have, you know, you have these big piles, you know, it seems that there's a piles of you know, papers up on the desk. It really brings it down to just a small amount of, of content, and that's all you're looking at. So it's much more easier to manage that and get all the reuse out of it than look at, you know, a big pile of, of paperwork. Any other questions? So Bob and Judy are around yep. through yep. the end of the show, so feel free to stop them and ask them questions. Uh, DCL, we have a, an exhibit, so if you have any questions for us, please stop by. Um, w one of the things Bob mentioned was about uh, cleaning up the content after, and um, we probably should have, and we didn't do it early enough, but DCL has a harmonizer content reuse analysis assessment tool that will look at all of your content and identify exact matches and close matches, you know, and in a lot of cases those close matches evolve from doing cut and paste from one document version to another to another and all of a sudden they're getting out of sync and you've got ten different iterations of the same paragraph. Well, wouldn't it be nice to get all those, where appropriate, consolidated back to a single source of truth and used as part of a topic or a topic. So we've got some technology to help with that. I'm happy to show any of you uh, that technology as well. Um, uh, Jim Tivy and Anad Turley from, uh, from Bluestream are here, so you can speak with them. And of course, the folks from Oxygen are here. Um, I, th I think it was a pretty sweet implementation altogether. Um, you know, I, I think a year from going to the PO's issue, now let's start, to a year out and being functional with a number of languages and then adding content, uh, I think that's a pretty short window to get to um, all of the real benefits of DITA. You know, better control of your content, <coughs> less content to manage, which drives uh, consistency and efficiency in the authoring and, and revision process, and uh, translation costs, and then just you know, I think the biggest saver, you know, doing more with less, less resources. You know, if, if you went from six to three and a half, that's two and a half FTEs. You're saving that uh, salary and benefits of two and a half bodies every year. I mean, that alone, you know, uh, 
puts an ROI in you know, 18 to 24 months. But then you add in the translation, the better content, additional outputs like HTML, uh, getting control of marketing, of software engineering. It just, it, it builds from there and it's, uh, it's, it's a good story. These guys work really hard and they uh, deserve a big round of applause. So. Yeah. Yeah, five years ago, we were behind all the time. Our, we were missing deadlines. The last two, three and a half, two and a half, three years, we've never missed a deadline. And uh, I said, these guys make me look good, I make my boss look good, everybody's happy. <laughs>